Hi, I'm Imeli Yahyawi, and I will present for you the essential of our work titled Development of Mathematical Model for Performance Analysis of Solid Oxide Fuel Cell with Variable Load. The work has been prepared by Stefani Vanusi Mello, Guatuluni, Giusara Faria Spardi, Lucas Frisera, Incarnasan, Fernando Tadeo, and Katia Taila Silva de Mello, and I. The presentation is organized as following. First, I will introduce the solid oxide fuel cell, then present the paper goal, followed by indicating the methodology, the electrical model, and then presenting the results and present some discussion. After that, I will present the cell study with decreased and then increased resistance load. The paper and by some conclusions. Solid oxide fuel cells are efficient devices for converting the chemical energy of fuels into electrical energy. The advantage of this cell is the high operating temperature whose value is between 600 and 1000 degrees Celsius. The high temperature allows First, the cell to be fed directly with natural gas, making it independent of the hydrogen supply due to the internal fuel reform. Then, operate in combined heat and power cycles, for example, associated with gas mi microturbines, increasing the generation of electrical energy for the same amount of fuel. To ensure a safe operation for the cell, it's necessary that the internal temperature gradient be controlled so that the temperature variation is compatible with the thermal expansion coefficient of the internal cell constituents. However, due to the high costs and difficulties of the implementation, it's impossible to insert thermocouples in the cells because they are hermetically sealed for safety. So, considering the cell characteristics, when the SOFC is operating feeding an off-grid load, it's necessary to predict the maximum temperature variation that may occur to prevent internal damage. Since the presence of the thermocouples is in these devices is not feasible, it's therefore necessary to predict the temperature response as a function of load variation. Therefore, this paper presents a thermodynamic and electrical modeling for tubular SOFC with internal reforming for variable loads, which will allow finding values like operating temperature, voltage, current, power and efficiency of the SOFC when the connected load varies the required current. The proposed model consists of six parts that model the thermodynamic behavior of reactions by mass balance and energy balance calculations, composed by two heat exchanger, a reformer, a nanode, a cathode, and combustor. The calculation of the mass balance is done according to equation one, and the calculation of the energy balance is calculated by equation two. Now, the functions of the model components are detailed. First, the two heat exchangers have the function of heating the inlet gases so that a high temperature gradient does not occur between them inside of the fuel cell. Then, the reformer has the function of reforming the natural gas components and then supplying the hydrogen, the gas that the cell uses for power generation. However, the cell anode has the function of oxidizing hydrogen electrons that will reach the cell cathode through the external circuit. Moreover, it is at the anode that the ion H plus meets the dioxygen and the water molecule is formed. In the cathode, the only reaction that occurs is the reduction of the oxygen molecule by receiving electrons from the anode. Finally, in the combustor, there is a total combustion of the gas, carbon oxide, and the hydrogen produced in anodes and in the reformer with the dioxygen brought from the cathodes. Now 
will see the electrical model of the SOFC fuel cell. In fact, with the information that originates in the cathodes and the anode of the cell, it's possible to calculate the electric parameters and they are obtained, therefore, from the thermodynamic formation of the cell's operation and this makes possible the electrical study of the cell with variation of no electrical parameters. To calculate the reversible voltage generated by the cell, the following equation is used. Then, the efficiency of the cell is evaluated thanks to the evaluation of the activation losses that are calculated by these yields equations and then the ohmic losses that are evaluated with the yield given by this equation. The power generated by the cell and therefore the yield, final yield of the cell are obtained by these two equations. In this model, the fuel flow is a function of the required current by the load and that can be obtained according to this expression. The amount of the natural gas used can be obtained according to this expression. The studies now will be presented showing the behavior of the cell through load variation. So the idea consists in varying the resistance or the, um, the resistance of the load and then to see the impact of the variation of the resistance of the load on the behavior of the fuel cell. So to keep the voltage on the load constant, a backboost converter here represented by a converter, DC-DC converter. So this converter is inserted, which keeps the voltage on the load always at 600 volt. Two studies will be carried out through a variable load represented by a resistance, the increase of the load and the other with the decrease of the load. So, using the values presented in this table, a study was carried out, increasing the load by decreasing the resistance progressively, as shown in figure 2. Until time 1, second of simulation, the converter is going into region. From the time of 2 seconds, the resistance value was decreased, which increased the current value. These will be presented in figure 3 and the cell dynamics are shown in figure 4 to 8. So here we have the gradual decrease in the resistance value which leads to a gradual increase in the current required by the load. This is possible since we fix the voltage on the load constant. So the voltage is constant. So since U is equal to R multiplied for the current, so when the resistance in decrease here, when the resistance in increase, so the current must increase in this way, the voltage is constant. Now, in this slide, we represent the case of the increased load. In this case, the power is increasing and the voltage generated by the cell is decreasing. Here, the efficiency increase and the temperature 
also increase because the power generated by the fuel cell increase. So it's obviously that the temperature generated by cell should increase too. As a consequence, the fuel flow should increase too because to generate more power, more electrical power, the fuel cell should use more fuel flow. This is described by this figure. In the case of cell, fuel cell with a decreased load, so using the values presented in table 1, a study was carried out increasing the resistance progressively as shown, in, as shown in figure 9. At the time 1 of simulation, the converter is going into regime. From the time of 2 seconds, the resistance value was increased, which decreased the current value. Figure 10 and the cell dynamics are shown in figures 11 to 15. Here we have the current decreasing since the resistance is increasing. So the voltage generated by the cell is increasing. In this figure, the results show that the power generated by the cell decreases when the load decreases. This clear. This is clear here when we show that when we see that the power, when the power is decreased, so the efficiency of the fuel cells also decreases. This is logic since when the fuel cell doesn't generate its nominal energy or nominal power it's it is not working on its uh, optimum conditions so we are not extracting the um, sufficient power by the um, that can be generated by the fuel cell. Therefore, the efficiency of the fuel cell decreased. Consequently, the temperature of the fuel cell should decrease also, since the power, when the power generated by the fuel cell decrease, so like a consequence, the temperature of the fuel cell should decrease also. Since the power generated is, is decreasing, so the fuel cell will not consume fuels as much as in the, uh, in the case of the increasing load. So here, the fuel flow will be increased too. Decreased too. Sorry. As a conclusion, fuel cells have a thermodynamic behavior. This implies that the delivered power depends on the characteristics of the gases that are exerted, such as pressure, temperature, flow, and composition. This infers that, the, that in order to conduct fuel cell behavior studies, these information need to be taken into account. Through the development modeling, a study were carried out with the decreasing and increasing of the load. An increasing load increased the required current and this causes the cell voltage to decrease due to internal losses. Power and efficiency increase due to the increase of the required current. Fuel flow increased to meet increased current requirement. This causes the cell temperature to rise. Moreover, decreased current causes cell voltage to increase. However, power and efficiency decrease. A lower current requires less fuel flow. Since the atmospheric air flow has not changed, the excess atmospheric air leads to a cooling of the cell. However, the solid oxide fuel cells are designed to operate with a constant, avoiding the variation of the internal temperature. 
This is because the materials that make up the internal components have a coefficient of expansion that can cause cracks and lead to cell malfunction or shutdown. It is not possible to use thermocouples to monitor the internal temperature of the cell. This model allows to obtain a temperature value close to the internal temperature of the cell, a variation of the current delivered by the cell OQ. Here are the references that are used in this presentation, and thank you very much.